Well, if any of you are looking for a video to prove how stupid I am, I'm about to give it to you, I think, but um, maybe not. <sighs> on Facebook recently, someone posted that stupid picture of an airplane on a conveyor belt. Mythbusters has done it. Other people have talked about it, and people generally like to believe that the airplane on the conveyor belt would fly away just fine. So I want to go back a bit. I want to take a step back. Let's actually read what the picture says, and let's discuss it, because I am of the position that the airplane would not take off, and here's why. <clears throat> Mythbusters, first of all, their experiment is wrong. They use a tarp on hard pavement with a propeller airplane on top of it. A propeller plane, the propeller pushes wind back at the wings. The wings provide the upward force that lifts it off the ground. Once it's off the ground, the tarp or conveyor or whatever is irrelevant. But ignoring that, the problem with their experiment is that the plane is pushing down through the tarp to the solid ground. Now, why does that matter? Let me read the original image so that you understand what we're really talking about here. It is a picture of a jumbo jet on top of a conveyor belt. About to cough, please hold. <coughs> that happened. Imagine a 747 is sitting on a conveyor belt. Now, be careful. This is a Boeing 747. This is a two-deck plane. It's humongous. It holds hundreds upon hundreds of people, way more than a lot of other airplanes. It is not some sort of little lightweight propeller-propelled aircraft. This thing has four per turbine engines, um, turbojet engines specifically, but it has four turbines that are level to the ground on the wings. <clears throat> it doesn't have a prop in the front to push air back. The thing weighs literally tons, a lot of tons. I haven't looked up how many tons. It's a lot of tons. It's a Boeing 747 jumbo jet. Um, back in the day, this was the biggest airplane that you could possibly build. Mythbusters did their test with a tiny propeller-based airplane. So, Here's the problem. People don't read this. Imagine a 747 is sitting on a conveyor belt. Now, it is a really big, heavy airplane sitting on top of a conveyor belt. Let's read into this. It is a, a conveyor belt with, you know, one or more wheels or whatever. And the belt, it's a belt. It's just this big, heavy flexible surface that this plane is putting all of its weight onto it and and we're assuming that there aren't a bunch of intermediate um what do you call those things they're like bearings that go under the belt of a conveyor belt just the classic like two spindle conveyor because that's what's in the illustration is there's two spindles and a belt between them already you can see that this is not practical now this is already into purely hypothetical territory because no one in practical physical reality can build a conveyor belt with no intermediate bearings of any sort that can hold an entire Boeing 747 jumbo jet. But let's assume that there is a conveyor belt that the belt part alone with no bearings underneath it can hold the entire force of the plane because that is what is illustrated. As wide, all right, conveyor belt as wide and long as a runway. This is a conveyor belt that is beyond any possible physical, it, it just, this isn't happening. The conveyor belt is designed to exactly match the speed of the wheels that's what gets everyone. The conveyor belt is designed to exactly match the speed of the wheels. That means if the wheels are spinning at a certain rate, the surface area of that conveyor belt is passing below them at the same rate that the surface area of the circle of the wheels is passing. This conveyor belt matches whatever speed the wheels would be going. 
physically impossible to make that happen. There is no way to actually make a conveyor belt that does this. However, we can hypothetically analyze a conveyor belt that does this. So, a conveyor belt that has the entire weight of the plane on top of it, has nothing underneath it to bear the weight of the plane to, <clears throat> like the Mythbusters experiment, and this conveyor belt is designed to impossibly, but that's the hypothetical, exactly match the speed of the wheels. Moving in the opposite direction, so however fast the plane is going forward, however fast the wheels are rotating, as the conveyor belt goes in the opposite direction, they match speed. Basically, the wheels match the speed of the conveyor belt. So for every linear foot of wheel surface that goes past, a linear foot of the conveyor belt goes past. They go the same speed. Can the plane take off? In Mythbusters, when they busted this myth, the problem with the design of their experiment is that, first of all, I've already gone over how this is impossible. Second of all, 747, the specifics matter. The vast majority of arguments over this particular picture are arguments that ignore the specifics. Oh, Mythbusters busted it. Well, Mythbusters used a tarp, not a conveyor belt, that can't possibly bear the entire weight of the airplane. They didn't use a 747. You get the idea. And there's no way that they synchronized the speed of the tarp to the speed of the plane. It's impossible to have that in perfect sync. Plus, by using a prop plane, they're cheating further because the prop pushes air back. Now the way that an airplane goes up is by having air hit the airfoil, the wings of the plane. When air hits an airfoil, the way that it's designed causes a system where there's a high pressure system underneath the wing and a low pressure system above it. This necessarily pushes up on the wing and that's how those two wings push up the fuselage of the plane. <clears throat> so, you know how that works. Now, here's where everybody gets it wrong. The engines of a 747 provide thrust that pushes the fuselage forward. What it does not do is push it upward. Now, okay, the argument against that is, oh, but this is airspeed. This is not ground speed. This is airspeed. And there's a big difference between airspeed and ground speed. No, 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 there's not. There's not a difference between airspeed and ground speed in this case, because until you have enough lift to get up off the ground, there's no such thing as airspeed. Now, let's go over some of the analogies that are used to try and explain this to us stupid people who don't understand. The biggest analogy, the most common analogy that I have seen is, imagine you have someone on a conveyor belt that also has roller skates on, and that they are pulling a rope. There is a rope tied to a wall somewhere in front of them, and they are pulling on that rope. <clears throat> so this person on this conveyor belt on roller skates pulls the rope. If they pull the rope, they will go forward regardless of the conveyor belt and the roller skates. It doesn't matter what they're doing, the guy's going to go forward. You're ignoring friction, for one thing, <clears throat> a rope attached to a wall is very different from an airplane trying to push itself, but let's pretend just, just kind of sort of that that's even remotely a good analogy. The problem inherent here is that if the guy pulling the roller skates, if he's pulling himself forward, this necessitates that the roller skates are going a faster wheel speed per linear foot wheel speed than the conveyor belt is going because otherwise you wouldn't be able to go forward. If the wheels are not permitted to go faster than the conveyor belt, you necessarily can't go forward. Again, <clears throat> excuse me, I've already gone over how impractical this is, but if we're going with the hypothetical as written, it's, it's total bullshit, I admit, it's total bullshit. It is impractical. It's not possible to make this happen in real life, but as a hypothetical, it is sound if you live in the world of the hypothetical as written. 
because you can't make the wheels go faster. Now, <clears throat> if the fuselage has an airspeed and there's a ground speed that's independent somehow, well, for that to be true, you would have to have the wheels exert no force on the airplane that the basically the conveyor pulls back right that's the whole idea is that the conveyor pulls back so the wheels need to be able to go forward but remember the rule is the wheels cannot go faster than the conveyor belt which we are at least assuming means the linear feet of wheel surface matches the linear feet of conveyor belt surface so if the plane is moving forward at all it has violated the rules of the hypothetical, and therefore, it can't possibly, it, it can't work. Because for wings to work, air must pass over them. Now, the Mythbusters, uh, Jamie from Mythbusters, Myth, blah, 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 <clears throat> you know what I meant, has done a follow-up video about this, where he talks about there's all these different factors that can't be controlled for, that would make it go up even if... There, even if the whole thing was perfect, it would make it go up anyway. <clears throat> uh, crosswind. Sorry, I have a dry throat tonight. Crosswinds that are strong enough to get up under the wing and lift it up without it going forward would make the damn thing take off. Now, as soon as it's up off the ground, it's gone. <laughs> That's just the end of it. Um, but in the world of the hypothetical, where the ground is 100% under control always matches the speed of the wheels. It is not possible to go forward. This implies a vertical takeoff. You cannot take off vertically if you only have wings and have no wind going under them. It is a physical impossibility. The problem with this hypothetical is that most people read it differently, that most people don't understand it. And the people who answer, oh yes, the plane will take off anyway, are analyzing it purely from their own practical standpoints. Uh, I got in an argument with an airplane mechanic on Facebook who didn't understand my point. He kept on trying to explain the four forces and all that. It's a 747. Gravity makes a 747 push an enormous downward force onto that conveyor belt. The, con the thrust would have to overcome it. But like I said, it doesn't even matter what the downward force is. The hypothetical dictates that the wheels and the conveyor belt must be going the same speed. So this is the kind of problem that you tend to get, the little brain teaser that you tend to get in higher math classes um, or reasoning classes, whatever. Anything in school, I just said reasoning classes and there's no such thing. That's hilarious. But anyway, um, the, you get you get what I'm saying. It's one of those brain teasers that you get that everybody points at and it's like, oh, no, let's have a big argument over it. And once you actually understand and internalize the real answer, you go, oh, oh my God. Are you, oh, wow, I can't believe it. So just by the impossible constraint of the speed of the wheels matching the conveyor belt, you can't get the plane to go up, period. There is nothing else you can do. Now, if the engines were angled up a little bit, they would exert a small amount of upward thrust. Eventually, that would cause the plane to lift off. On a 747, I'm fairly sure that they don't do any kind of upward thrust. Um, what else could you do? I mean, I, if you can make the plane, if you could change the center of gravity of the plane... Uh, no, but it, I mean, it's not going to tip back unless you put a lot of stuff back there and it'll immediately crash. So maybe now you understand why the problem with the airplane conveyor belt thing and the reason that Mythbusters is irrelevant is that nobody takes the time to read it precisely. You need to read these things like they're legal text, not like they're some sort of thing for you to interpret into your own way. It doesn't say that the plane's wheels, you know, the, the conveyor belt tries to match the plane's wheel speed, or that the conveyor belt tries to go the same speed, there is no condition in the text under which the plane's wheels can violate the speed matching. Which means that if the plane is going forward to make that lift, it's violated that condition. End rant. Um, <clears throat> maybe I'll look back on this in the future and regret ever having made this video, but um, this isn't the future. This is October of 2021. It's almost Halloween, and it probably scares the crap out of some of you that what I said might actually make half a degree of sense. Now, if we're living in the real world, 
and this is a thing that could actually be implemented, there's enough imperfection in reality to make that 747 take off. Even if it immediately crashes later, it'll still get off the ground for a little while. Thanks for... I have email at my production company email, Gazing Cat Productions, meow at gazingcat.com for all your video needs. Thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Look down in the description for links to support me, my other channels, my websites, all kinds of stuff you may not care about. But hey, <laughs> go look. If you don't look, you don't know. Have a good morning, noon, night, whatever it is. Thanks for listening. Take care.